Hey, Jimmy Beach here with Alien Skin Software. In this tutorial, we'll make a glass button with eye candy. Take a look at a few of the example images on our website. They are all similar, but they're not identical. All of them are pretty easy to make. Let's make one. I'm using Photoshop CS5. I have a file open. I made myself a little background pattern to work with, just like the examples on our website. The first thing I'll do is duplicate the background layer with Command or Control J. And now we need a selection. I'll use the vector shape tool right here. Click and hold, and then select the rounded rectangle shape. I'm going to make a lozenge shape button, but before I make the shape, I'm gonna set the radius up here. Now I'll click and drag it out to look like an extended release liquid cap. Over in the layers panel, let's move the vector mask right here over to the duplicate layer and delete the solid fill layer. At this point, I'll convert the button layer to a smart object. It's a faster way when you're tweaking a setting like this. I'll right click on the layer and convert to a smart object. We're ready for eye candy's glass filter. I'll go to filter, eye candy, text and selection, glass. The default settings look pretty good, but let's choose a preset. Under colored, we'll go with amber. Now let's go over to the basic tab. I'll shut off the output on new layer dialog box because that feature is not compatible with smart objects and I'll apply it, and there we go, that was too easy. The button we just made has a bit of refraction to that underlying background image. It's a cool looking effect, but if you want to move the button around, the background image won't match up. Remember this when you're creating a button. You can make a button on an empty layer to fix this problem. I'll make a new layer to illustrate. I'll make another rounded selection with the rounded rectangle tool. Load the selection of the vector mask by holding Command or Control and clicking on the layer thumbnail in the Layers panel. I'll click the new layer button here on the bottom of the Layers panel. Now I'll rerun iCandy's glass filter with Command or Control F. If you do it this way, you won't have any refraction, but you do have the freedom to move it around the image. See? Let's duplicate our original Smart Object button and customize a new version. I'll click on the layer and Command and Control J. Let's move it up a little bit. Then double click on the filter just below the new layer. It'll open Eye Candy again. First I want to adjust the bevel width until it looks more round. I'll up the smoothness too, around 65 or so. I want the most realism that I can get. So right here under Round Selection Corners, I'm going to turn it up one click at a time. I'll zoom way, way in with the magnifying glass so you can see what I'm talking about. Just enough to clip the little snagged corners where the bevel meets the horizontal edge. About five does it. And though this seems like a tiny tweak, it really makes a difference. Let me zoom back out. I'll press one to one. I'll turn the opacity up to mute the underlying lines and turn down the refraction amount. Tinting works differently than opacity. Tinting will color the underlying surface but you can still see through the glass. Opacity makes the glass cloudy so you can't see through it. So be mindful of this when you're coloring your glass effect. Let's move over to the lighting tab. I think the highlight's too bright. I can't see any lines bleeding through the highlight, so I'm gonna turn that down. I want to use a reflection map. I'll click right here, select from file, and I want the nature forest map. I'll set the reflection strength a bit low and set the blur a little bit under halfway. A low strength reflection opacity and blur seems to help the button look shiny, but not wet. And that's all. I'll press enter to accept. And I hope you like this tutorial. I hope it helps you understand the glass filter in eye candy a little bit more. Remember to use a smart filter when you're dialing in for a specific look, just like we did here. It's a lot quicker for making different options. Thanks for tuning in today. Until next time, this is Jimmy Beach with Alien Skin Software.